Members. We now turn to the next item of business. Which is a statement by Jamie Hepburn on launching Scotland's new employment support service and welcoming the opportunity for better integration and alignment. The Minister will take questions at the end of the statement. I would encourage all members who wish to ask a question of the Minister to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call on Jamie Hepburn. Presiding officer, we are now one week away from the commencement of Fair Start Scotland on the 3rd of April. I, I firmly believe Scotland should have full powers over employment and employability policy to deliver a more joined up system for those in and out of work. But for now, we are fully using the limited employment support powers devolved by the Scotland Act to deliver a programme of government commitment to provide tailored person-centred support to a minimum of 38,000 people who are furthest removed from the labour market. If Fair Start Scotland builds in the, the success of our transitional services, Workable Scotland and Work First Scotland, which have been running over the, the past year and are on track to exceed the ambition we had to support up to 4,800 people move towards and into employment. A full assessment of this interim year will be available in due course. I've seen firsthand how these transitional services are delivering tailored and personalised employment support capable of making a difference to people's lives, having a positive impact on people's confidence and self-esteem. And Fair Start Scotland will deliver that same approach by providing high quality employment support to unemployed people, including those facing multiple barriers who want to work and need help to enter and remain in the labour market by putting people at the centre, delivering flexible tailored support that meets their needs by embedding dignity and respect, fairness and equality in our approach to helping people find work. It will be delivered locally by a range of service providers and the delivery partners from the public, private and third sector. It will be delivered by providers who are committed to the principles of fair work, including paying the living wage and avoiding use of zero hours contracts. It will ensure that people will be able to participate in Fair Start Scotland on a voluntary basis. So I'm determined that Fair Start Scotland will be about encouraging people to take the opportunity our support offers and it won't be about threatening benefit sanctions and anyone's financial well-being. President Officer, over the, the last three months I have led uh, local regional events across Scotland to ensure readiness for Fair Start Scotland delivery. Uh, the most striking feature to emerge from those discussions is that local government and all those who have been involved share a clear agenda to provide the best possible employment support for our people and to make sure they have access to the best possible opportunities. During this uh, period, we have worked closely with Fair Start Scotland providers to ensure they are ready and have developed robust plans, processes and guidance to ensure that Fair Start Scotland delivers a high quality service to its participants. During this period, we have also worked closely with the Department for Working Pensions and their job centres across Scotland. As the main referral route into Fair Start Scotland, we have worked productively with the DWP to ensure IT systems will support Fair Start Scotland referrals. Over the last few months, we have delivered awareness raising sessions to around 1,500 job centre plus staff across Scotland who have demonstrated their willingness to work with us in Fair Start Scotland and to deliver the aim of helping people find work. I am pleased that Job Centre Plus have already begun referring to Fair Start Scotland for our providers to hit the ground running on the 3rd of April. Presiding officer, as Fair Start Scotland begins, we will do as we have done from the outset of this process. We will continue to listen to stakeholders in the, the third private and public sectors, and above all, from those who use our service to ensure that Fair Start Scotland is delivering for those who need it. But while Fair Start Scotland is a significant development in the Scottish employability landscape, there's only a first step in a wider programme to deliver more effective and joined up employment support for people and in our work to deliver more inclusive growth and opportunities for all. Last August, I announced 13 projects would receive funding from our Employability, Innovation and Integration Fund. These projects involve partners collaborating at a, a local level to deliver new innovative approaches to join up employability support with health and social care, justice and housing services. Earlier today, I visited Capital City Partnerships joined up for jobs integration project in Edinburgh, bringing together existing housing, criminal justice, health and social care services to work collectively and bring about genuine and sustainable integration 
with employability provision. I was encouraged by this collaboration between health partners, including NHS link workers and public health practitioners, to explore how links between health and employability services can be strengthened and help deliver better employment outcomes for people. This is exactly the type of joined up collaborative and better aligned service delivery we require. With the launch of Fair Start Scotland, the time is right to, to set out a plan to better integrate and align employability support with other support and services. I am therefore delighted to announce the publication today of No One Left Behind, Next Steps for the Integration and Alignment of Employability Support in Scotland. And no One Left Behind sets out how we will start to join up wider employability support within Scotland as a specific focus on integrating employability support with health, justice and housing services, areas that are critical to enable better support for people furthest removed from employment. No one left behind sets out the actions that we will develop and implement collaboratively with our partners, action to work with local government to improve alignment of employability provision at a local level, action to focus on helping more people who are released from custody to find employment and preventing a return to criminal activity by working with the Scottish Prison Service to develop new routes into employment services that will help support more people with a conviction to find and sustain work. An action to pilot a, a single health and work gateway in Fife and Dundee, providing a single point of contact for different services for those at risk of falling out of work or have recently left work due to ill health. The pilot will achieve better integration of healthcare and employability support so people with disabilities or long-term health conditions, including mental health conditions, will benefit from a service that more closely matches their needs. I want to be clear though, that the measures I've set out today are, are just the start of a, a wider programme of work to better integrate and align employability services. This includes engaging with people and organisations to discuss the future of the employability system in Scotland, to identify where we can make a real difference to the delivery of a more flexible, person-centred and joined up system. Our review of what we have in place will focus on the resources the Scottish Government invests in the employability system. I want to make sure that our investment best meets our shared ambitions and that is responsive to a changing labour market. It will be driven by the, the views and experience of service users and those frontline teams delivering services. I look forward to being involved in many of those conversations over the next few months. The work to deliver the actions that are laid out and no one left behind will begin now. A delivery group will monitor the progress made and I will keep Parliament up to date on our initial activity by the end of this year and going forward by publishing an annual report showing progress against that plan. Presiding officer, the, the launch of Fair Start Scotland is an important milestone in utilising the powers of the Scotland Act in delivering employability support. Our transitional services have been a success. With our planning and preparation for Fair Start Scotland, I'm confident that it too will be a success and will deliver for the people of Scotland. And the work this government will take forward through No One Left Behind will begin the process of joining up employability support and deliver better employment outcomes for people across the country. Our opportunity to deliver a distinct and more aligned system of employment support in Scotland begins now. It is an opportunity I'm determined we make the most of. Thank you. I call Dean Lockhart to be followed by Ian Gray. Dean Lockhart. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And I thank the Minister for advance copy of his statement. The devolution of employability support programmes to this Parliament through the Scotland Act and the Smith Commission was actively supported by the Scottish Conservatives. The ability to shape and improve the Scottish labour market to best suit local priorities and the needs of individuals should be at the very heart of employment services going forward. Can I therefore ask the Minister what his reaction is to the concerns raised by organisations such as uh, the SCVO that the Scottish Government's approach is not, in their words, sufficiently flexible and responsive to individual needs or to their circumstances or geographical location. The Minister will also be aware that the SCVO has raised concerns that third sector subcontractors have been walking away from the system due to what they call unrealistic costings. And I note that the Minister's statement today contains no mention of costs or budgets for these programmes. Given concerns expressed about unrealistic costings, will the Minister today provide a guarantee to Parliament that the costings he has previously provided 
for the implementation of the employability programmes are realistic? And will he also guarantee that we will not see significant cost overruns in this programme as we have with countless other new systems introduced by his government? Yes. Well, let me pick up on, on each of those uh, points. Um, in relation to the, uh, the point raised about uh, the notion that we've seen uh, third sector subcontractors walk away from Fair Start Scotland, that's simply not the case, uh, President Officer. There has, of course, uh, been some changes in specific uh, contract areas. That is not unusual for the awarding of any uh, public contract of this in nature. But each and every single uh, third sector organisation who was signed up to Fair Start Scotland is still uh, involved uh, in various locations across uh, the country. In terms of the, uh, the, uh, the issue of the flexibility and the responsiveness of Fair Start Scotland, uh, particularly in relation to its geographical uh, breakdown, uh, I believe we have uh, created a, a flexible system. This is, of course, new for us, President Officer. We will seek to learn from what we put in place. And within uh, the boundaries of being able to be flexible within the confines of having awarded contracts, we have imbued uh, the ability to be flexible and responsive to what we learn. But in relation to the suggestion that this is not going to be a programme that is going to be geographically responsive, I will take no lessons from the Conservative Party on this matter. We have awarded contracts across nine local contract package areas. If we were still under the jurisdiction of the UK government, we would quite clearly see Scotland now as one contract package yep. area, as is happening across the rest of the United Kingdom with super contract package areas awarded with no chance for that uh, local uh, uh, interaction. And as for the issue about the costs of, uh, or, the, or the budget uh, for the programme, again, I'll take no lessons from uh, the Scottish Conservatives on this matter because what Dean Lockhart omitted to mention was the 85% cut yep. in funding that came to us when this yep. matter was uh, uh, devolved to us, which has meant we have had to uh, find other resources, which we have done, and willingly so, to make sure that this programme uh, will be a success. I've set out uh, already that the budget for uh, for the three-year referral uh, will be £96 million for the contracts we've awarded, and that remains the case, and I can give that commitment to Parliament now. Ian Gray to be followed by Clare Hockey. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and my thanks too to the Minister for early sight. Uh, of his statement. The government uh, have made much of their entirely laudable aim to create an employment support service uh, which is better uh, than what was previously in place, fairer, more flexible and more person-centred. Uh, in truth, that has not gone entirely smoothly. These responsibilities were devolved a year ago, uh, but the government rolled on contracts to deliver a transitional year. Uh, when the new contracts were awarded late last year, 85% uh, of the primary contractors turned out to be private sector providers uh, once again. The Minister says categorically that transition services have been a success, but he also said that we will have to wait for an assessment in due course. If he has the evidence of success to hand, can I ask why he has not simply published it today? And with regard to the new programme, we've been told that the so-called customer welcome pack will require people to sign up nine separate times to various programme commitments at their first meeting. Will the Minister agree with me that that would seem a far cry from the promise of a system based on fairness, dignity and respect? Minister. No, I, I, would, uh, I would disagree uh, with Mr Gray's assessment. I think we have put in place a system uh, that is fairer, uh, not least and primarily amongst them the commitment of this uh, administration to, to do what has not been done uh, south of the border and to ensure that people are not compelled to take part in our programme, to make sure that our programme is seen as a, an opportunity uh, for them uh, to, to take part. Uh, in terms of uh, the uh, array of uh, providers we have awarded contracts uh, to, uh, there is, and I was very clear throughout the entire process, couldn't have been clearer, President Officer, that there would be a mixed economy, the various sectors would be delivering this programme. That's exactly what we have put in place. There is a significant role for the third sector in each of the contract package areas. That uh, was the commitment made, and that is the, uh, the commitment we have fulfilled. And in relation to his uh, point about the, uh, the success of uh, our interim approach, well, uh, I can say it's informed 
on two ways. One, and I readily concede it's anecdotal, what I have done is I've gone out and actually spoken to people who go, have gone through that programme. They've spoken to me of the a great benefit. Don't worry, Mr Gray, we'll come to the numbers uh, in a minute. They've spoken to me about the uh, great benefits they've seen of the different approach we've taken. These are people who've gone through predecessor programmes administered by the DWP who are saying the programme we are delivering feels different, is delivering uh, differently for them. But in terms of uh, raw data, then I'm very happy to provide that. Mr Gray's clearly not been paying attention, President Officer, because we published the information on the 28th of, oh. of uh, February, and uh, I would remind uh, the, uh, Mr Gray that our uh, commitment was to support up to 4,800 people with disabilities and health conditions towards and into work this year. As of February, three quarters of the way through the year, we had 4,472 people join Workforce Scotland and Workable Scotland up to the 29th of December. We are going to exceed the target we set this year. Claire Hockey to be followed by Jamie Halcrow Johnson. Claire Hockey. Fair Start Scotland different from previous DWP employment support programmes? Minister. Well, I've already alluded to uh, one of the fundamental differences uh, in that uh, our programme will be entirely voluntary. That's, uh, for me, the uh, correct uh, approach. It's been informed by my uh, experience as a constituents representative, one I'm sure will be common to all of us, of having had constituents uh, in touch uh, who've been through the benefit system, who've been sanctioned, and we know the duress that puts them under. I think we'll get more out of people if they take part in a voluntary uh, basis. We're also funding uh, our programme appropriately. I made that point to uh, Mr Lockhart. Uh, we've uh, committed £20 million additional each year of this part over and above the significantly reduced funding we received from the DWP. That's £96 million for a, a three-year referral period, in contrast to the a UK government's approach with a, a £600 million award for the entirety of England and Wales for a five-year uh, referral period. So on a pro rata basis, we're investing significantly more. I've already made the point about it being delivered uh, more uh, locally. We're also uh, encouraging service providers to commit to the, the Fair Work uh, Workforce Community Benefits uh, agenda. Uh, they are committed to paying uh, at least the living wage to those who deliver the programme. Uh, and, uh, of course, also we have an offer of supported employment and individual placement and support uh, through our approach as well, which is somewhat different from uh, the Working Health programme. Jamie Halker johnson to be followed by Jackie Bailey. Jamie Halker johnson Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Minister has spoken about greater integration with health, housing and justice services. While this is to be welcomed, can the Minister tell us what action is being taken to improve links with skills agencies and providers to ensure that we have a service that provides people with the training and support needed to enter the workplace and build on their existing skills in a personalised way? Yes, sir. Let me say I think that's a, an eminently reasonable question from uh, Mr Johnston. Uh, the first point I would make in relation to this transition year is that for Workable Scotland, the Skills Development Scotland themselves who uh, issued that contract, they've been a firm part of this uh, agenda. Uh, one of the uh, explicit commitments uh, uh, that's uh, referred to and, and no one uh, left behind is one of the actions to make sure that where we take people through the journey into employment, uh, at the other end of it, we're making sure they're equipped with the skills for uh, actual labour market requirements. We make the point that we must uh, look at growth sectors such as early years, uh, childcare, uh, for uh, example. So we will make sure that as we take forward uh, our employability programmes, they are uh, that's part of the challenge, making sure they're entirely aligned with every, every element of the system. <coughs> And, of course, our skills agencies are a, a critical part of that, too. Jackie Bailey to be followed by Angus MacDonald. The Minister is, of course, aware of the significant disappointment that so little of the programme delivery is being undertaken by the voluntary sector, a mere 15%. Since then, and despite what the Minister said earlier, at least three voluntary organisations who are subcontractors have withdrawn. And let me refresh his memory. The WISE group from Tayside, who is a subcontractor there, Sam H, the Scottish Association for Mental Health, and the Royal National Institute for the Blind, both withdrawn from the West contract. Now, I'm sure he will confirm that this is accurate because I took it from his very own website. And I ask for that confirmation because um, they were on your website last week, but appear to have simply disappeared this week. So I can say to the minister, we do indeed pay attention to what he gets up to. Does he share my concern, therefore, that the voluntary sector are voting with their feet? And what does the minister believe are their reasons for withdrawing from these areas? Minister. Well, well let me uh, say, President Officer, that the only 
the sense of disappointment I get is from the Labour Party and that we are administering this programme in a very different way and they can't use it as a, a rod to uh, batter us with. And in terms of the three specific organisations she has mentioned, the WISE Group, RNIB and SAMH, what I can do today is confirm that they are all still taking part in the delivery of Fair Start Scotland. They are still part of our uh, programme. In relation to her estimation that the voluntary sector is only deliver delivering some 15% of our programme, that is not correct. Uh, the voluntary sector, the third sector, is delivering on a far wider basis. Uh, our estimation is they will be delivering something approaching 40% of uh, delivery. So uh, she may be paying attention, but I think she needs to pay a little more. Angus MacDonald to be followed by Alison Johnson. Thank you. Um, the Minister will know that Fair Start Scotland will be led in Forth Valley by Falkirk Council, who have an employment and training unit that I and many others believe is second to none. Does the Minister agree that the local authority-led bid provides an excellent opportunity to develop a collaborative approach to co-investing in employability at a local level and creates the potential to declutter the landscape and devolve more of this activity to local employability partnerships? Yes, well, uh, let me say to uh, Mr Macdonald, uh, he's of course quite correct to, to bang the drum, to beat the drum for uh, one of his uh, local services delivering in his local area. But I uh, can say I've been to see the uh, employer Employment and Training Unit uh, in Falkirk and I have been very impressed with the, the work they do. And uh, Pamela Smith, who heads up uh, that unit uh, for Falkirk, who is also uh, the head of uh, Scottish Local Authority Economic Development uh, team, was uh, a very important member of our advisory group, uh, which was very informative in the design of uh, the Fair Start Scotland uh, programme. So uh, Falkirk is certainly uh, playing its part in, in relation to that. In relation to the, the fundamental question, our uh, approach to uh, the contracting approach to delivery of Fair Start Scotland is a, a pragmatic uh, and realistic one to design to deliver the best possible service. I'm very delighted that in Forth Valley, uh, Falkirk Council are uh, taking the the lead uh, there. I look forward to working with them uh, to make sure they, they deliver the services they have set out that they will deliver. Uh, but of course, President Officer, uh, that will be the same. It uh, will be true of all providers in all parts of Scotland. Alison Johnson to be followed by Willie Rennie. Alison Johnson. Um, thank you. Can the Minister confirm that Fair Start providers will be rewarded for helping people into work that pays the real living wage rather than the lower national living wage, which the Scottish Government has rightly recognised and acknowledged as not allowing people to meet a basic standard of living. Minister. Well, of course, uh, Ms Johnson will be well aware, and she's alluded to it herself, this uh, uh, government's great commitment to uh, the living wage. That's why uh, we pay it. That's why we fund the Poverty Alliance to make sure they are working with all sectors to uh, encourage them to become accredited. And uh, through that work, we've seen an uplift of some 25,000 more people uh, being paid uh, the living wage. So we'll continue uh, that work to make sure that uh, everyone in Scotland, including those going through uh, Fair Start Scotland, gets the best possible chance to uh, end up in uh, fulfilling uh, and, above all, well-remunerated employment. Willie Rennie to be followed by Ruth Maguire. Uh, I was particularly disappointed that the Minister didn't actually answer Jackie Bailey's question about the withdrawal of three uh, organisations from, from the, 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 the new service, in particular Sam H in the West contract, and I hope he does address this particular point. I understand they're still involved in other contracts, but why did they involve, why did they withdraw from that particular contract? Because mental health has been a particular challenge for employment support services to get right. So we do need Sam H and their expertise involved in the delivery of the service. So can he answer Jackie Bailey's question? Minister. Well, my perspective, President Officer, and Mr Rennie may not be surprised to learn is that I did answer uh, Jackie Bailey's uh, question. Uh, I would make the point that Sam H are still involved in the delivery of the programme. With respect to the particular uh, uh, contract lot, it is, of course, not unusual that that type of relationship will uh, develop. But Mr Rennie should uh, rest at ease that because Sam H are not uh, the specific delivery partner in that contract package area does not mean that it is not incumbent on the service provider to ensure that where any person who requires specific support because of mental health challenges, that they should get it. And I've made the point a number of times now that unlike any other employment programme in these islands, we've got the individual placement and support model, which is specifically designed to support people with mental health challenges. So our system is designed to support such individuals, and that's exactly what I expect it to do. 
Alexander Burnett to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, as I'm sure the Minister is aware, employment rates for the disabled are significantly lower than the non-disabled population. And in particular, I've had a, many autistic constituents contact me with their struggles uh, for finding work. Uh, so can I ask the Minister what specific measures will be put in place to ensure that the individual needs of the disabled are tailored to within the No One Left Behind scheme? Minister. It, well, it's uh, again a very reasonable, I'm not used to all these reasonable questions from the Conservative benches, uh, President Officer, I, I don't know if I'll get used to it. It is a, a very reasonable question from Mr Burnett. He will be aware that we have a separate from No, one's, uh, no One Is Left Behind it also published a fair stock for disabled people in which we've made a significant commitment to uh, doing uh, more to uh, ensure that we can half the disability employment gap. We will be holding a, a summit at the uh, end of April, at which the First Minister, uh, myself and the uh, Minister for Social Security will all be in attendance to focus specifically on employment for disabled people. Uh, I, I recognise though that that, can, that group cannot be looked um, at uh, in the round. There will be different groups, different cohorts within that uh, uh, group and those with um, learning disability, autism, we know that the employment rate is even lower. So we're going to have to consider uh, very clearly working with the organisations who represent them, such as Enable, who we already have supported through our 14 to 19 fund to be engaged in the uh, territory of employability uh, projects, work with them to ensure that we can do rather better. And uh, again, that will be a critical part of the work we take forward through Fair Scott for disabled people and also no one left behind. Apologies to Ruth McGuire. I meant to call her last. Ruth McGuire. Apology accepted, Presiding Officer. Um, can the Minister provide detail on how Fair Start will be integrated with other services and support? Minister. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, well, that's one of the things that uh, I've been very pleased with when I've gone around the country as part of the mobilisation activity to, to meet with service providers in each contract lot area. I've not been meeting them in isolation. I've been meeting them and side by side, there's been the different local authorities. We've seen the DWP, Job Centre Plus, around the table. We've seen the Scottish Prison Service. We've seen the National Health Service. So um, my clear expectation and is laid out in the contractual expectations is that those who we have awarded Fair Start Scotland contracts to must be making a concerted effort to go out find out what's happening in the area, make sure they are working in tandem, hand in hand, mm -hmm. with those, uh, those, uh, those pre-existing uh, services. But of course, this is also part of our, our wider challenge uh, that we've laid out in, in No One Left Behind, uh, and the work to ensure that we have a better understanding of the full picture of uh, services across the country uh, begins, uh, and so too will the work to make sure that what we offer can complement better what is offered by local authorities and also interact better with other statutory services, such as the health service, the Scottish prison service, social work, and so on. Fulton McGregor, to be followed by Mark Griffin. Fulton McGregor. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Minister how the Scottish Government will evaluate the success of Fair Start Scotland. Minister. It, well, there are a number of uh, requirements for us uh, to do so laid out in uh, the, uh, the terms of Fair Start Scotland. Uh, we will uh, be rigorously managing the performance of Fair Start Scotland providers to ensure uh, that there is a quality service uh, and consistent provision across the whole of Scotland. Uh, we are already taking the opportunity to learn lessons from the delivery of this year's transitional services, Work for Scotland, Work Able Scotland. It uh, will be developing an evaluation approach that will focus on both the management information and data, which Mr Gray, I'm sure, will be delighted to learn. We will be publishing and making available for all uh, to see. Uh, and we'll also, and I think this is the most fundamentally important thing for us to do, and I've made the point that I've been out doing it uh, already, speaking to people who are actually using our services. We will only truly understand the difference our services are making when we actually speak to and engage with the people who are using them. And that will be a critical part of the evaluation work we take forward. Mark Griffin to be followed by Stuart McMillan. Mark Griffin. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Minister confirm that when people enrol in Fair Start Scotland, they will remain eligible to access their own individual training allowances. And if participants can take part in other community programmes that are currently matched with funding from the European Social Fund. Minister. Um, the, that is a question that's been raised when we've been going around speaking to organisations around the country. Uh, I've put to one side, obviously, the, the great uncertainty that exists around the European Social Fund generally, which we're having to 
uh, explored. I don't think it will be as cut and dried as saying that um, uh, a person will be able to, will or will not be able to access European Social Fund funded projects. We clearly don't set out the rules for ESF. There is uh, uh, an element of which that cannot be about the replication of existing services, but there will be the other projects that they can uh, benefit by. So uh, that's something we're looking at just now, and I'd be very happy to ensure that uh, Mr Griffin is kept informed of uh, the, the further information we can develop that we'll be rolling out to, to all of our providers across country. And Stuart McMillan. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, notwithstanding the, the previous uh, answer from the Minister, can the Minister actually confirm uh, that, uh, that those who actually use Fair Start will actually continue to, to receive support once they, they actually have found employment and that businesses will also be able to access advice and information on how to support employees with additional needs? Minister. Uh, yes, I can give that uh, confirmation. We know that um, uh, ensuring that a person gets the uh, the uh, Pre-work support is only half of the battle. It's essential that we provide uh, that in-work uh, support as well for uh, both the person who will then become an employee and for the employer, because they will need to, uh, on occasion, access that uh, information and advice. We have uh, put in place a system that will offer 12 months high-quality pre-work support, rising to 18 months for those with the highest support needs. If needed, we'll also offer uh, 12 months in-work assistance to individuals. This means through Fair Start Scotland, people can rely on up to 24 to 30 months support, including more support once people and work uh, to, to keep them there. Uh, this compares to a maximum of 21 months uh, support through the Work and Health programme. Thank you very much to the Minister and to members. That concludes our statement on Fair Start Scotland. And we'll move on to the next item of business, which is a debate on motion 11230 in the name of Bob Doris on City Regions, deal or no deal. Just take a few moments for members and ministers to change seats.